Hey guys, this is Vishal from Adireka and I welcome you all to this session on AWS pricing. Today I'm going to give you various reasons as to why AWS has the best pricing model when you talk about various cloud service providers. But before we do that, let's quickly take a look at today's agenda first. Firstly, I would be talking about how does one go ahead and choose a proper service. Then I would talk about different pricing fundamentals and pricing models that AWS has to offer to you. We would also discuss different AWS calculators and the free tier of AWS. Finally, I would finish things off with the cost optimization part. I hope this agenda is clear to all of you. So let's not waste any time and get started then. So how does one choose a service? Well, there are quite a few parameters which one needs to consider. As far as the best service providers in the market is concerned, they consider these parameters. Customer friendly. It is very important that a service provider is customer friendly because different businesses have different needs. And if the customer needs are met, then the customer would be happy. And as far as the service provider is concerned, that is what the aim is. If you talk about Amazon, it has the best customer service. And Amazon probably claims that if you've ever used one of their services, you would know that we are the best service providers in the market. Next, we have transparency. Now, it is very important that your service provider is transparent. Now, what do I mean by this? What happens is most of the times people are forced to pay money upfront and then they're given access to the services. This does not give them any time or have any kind of demo with the services that are provided by the service provider. This is where AWS is different. What it does is it offers you free tier. Now, what this free tier does is it lets you use all of its services for free and that too for one year. So you have sufficient demo or access to the services which AWS has to offer to you. And then you can take a call whether you want to go ahead and pay for these services or not. Pocket friendly. AWS is highly pocket friendly. Why am I saying this? Say for example, you have to go ahead and buy a server. Now AWS lets you have a server for one month at a meager price of $5 only. And this is highly affordable. So these are few of the important points which people need to consider when they go ahead and pick a service. And when you talk about AWS, it meets all of these needs. So let us move further and try to understand the different pricing fundamentals which AWS has. Now AWS considers these three fundamentals that is compute, storage and data transfer. If you talk about compute, what AWS does is it charges you on hourly basis. That is you can use their compute and their processing services at a very less price and also you'd pay only for those resources which you've used. And again, when you talk about time constraint, if you're using those services only for one hour, you'd be paying only for one hour. Next we have storage. What AWS does is it charges you per gigabyte. That is even if you use very less space, you'd be paying only for that space. And since it is almost as less as one GB, that is you have to pay only for one GB. What this does is you don't have to worry about scaling because if you're using more resources, you'd be paying accordingly. So yes, when you talk about storage, this is a very important point and AWS has it covered. Next we have data transfer. Now when you talk about data transfer, Again, AWS charges you per gigabyte and it charges you only for the data that goes out. So yes, this again is an important point and based on all these points, what AWS has done is it has gone ahead and it has built various pricing models. So let us move further and take a look at those pricing models one by one. Now AWS has these three pricing models that is pay less as you get more, pay as you go and save when you reserve. Let's first talk about pay as you go. As I've already mentioned, AWS has a very flexible pricing model. Now, what do I mean by this? AWS charges you on hourly basis, plus it charges you only for the compute capacity and the resources which you are using. So if you need a particular resource for one hour and you need n number of or n amount of compute capacity, you'd be paying only for that thing. Say for example, your requirement is 40 GB for first month, but what happens is you end up only using 10 GB. Now in this case your 30 GB of space is wasted and this is when you pay upfront. But if you're paying on hourly basis and only for the resources which you're using, you're actually saving up all the cost which you would otherwise pay. Secondly, we have something called as pay less as you get more. Yes, more the services you use as far as AWS is concerned, it charges you fairly less. You have a chance of saving up to 70% of your total cost and that is a very nice feature to have. You also have something called as save when you reserve. 
now if you know how much resources and the compute capacity that you're going to use in near future what you can do is you can go ahead and reserve these services in advance now in that case aws charges you fairly less compared to the other models so let us go ahead and take a look at these one by one firstly we have no upfront costs now what this means is uh, you can go ahead and reserve your resources and your services in advance but you are not paying anything but what happens here is you are paying an amount which is lesser than the previous two mentioned models that is pay as you go and pay less as you use more but this thing is still costlier compared to the other subtypes of this model that is partial upfront cost and full upfront cost now when you talk about partial upfront cost you are paying a partial lump sum amount which is less than the total amount and you are reserving all your instances and all those things but this is comparatively affordable when you compare it with no upfront costs it is however costlier than the last one that is full upfront payment or costs in the last point that is full upfront costs what you do is you decide okay these are the amount of resources which i'm going to use and this is the compute capacity which i need and accordingly you book all those resources and you make an upfront payment now since you are making an upfront payment this is the most affordable of all the pricing models that are there but for this you need to be assured that these are the minimum resources which i'm going to use and if required i will have to scale up but not scale down so this is about different pricing models as far as aws is concerned so let us move further and try to understand the next point now how does one go ahead and calculate the savings which one makes well aws has provided you with an aws calculator now what does this aws calculator do it lets you calculate your monthly expenses that is the services which you've used and all those things hence you can keep a track of all the money which you're supposed to invest apart from that it also provides you with various templates which lets you appraise your complete solution there's one more variant as far as the calculator is concerned it is called as tco that is total cost of ownership now it is little different than the normal aws calculator what it does is it basically lets you calculate or compare one services price with the other service it also lets you compare the infrastructure solution which aws has to offer to you and this might vary from business to business so when you talk about the total cost of ownership for which you might invest this is the calculator which you should go for now when you talk about the aws calculator or the tco calculator i would be giving you a small demo or once i walk you through the aws website i would be telling you as in how do these calculators work i hope this point is clear to all of you so let's move further and try to understand the next point now aws also has to offer you a free tier which i mentioned in the past so let us move ahead and try to understand what this is exactly now as i've mentioned aws has various services to provide to you and those services will have the subtypes as well so all these services are available to you for free for one year and this is the access which aws provides to you say for example you have a service called as amazon elastic cloud compute this is one of the most popular services as far as aws is concerned and when you talk about its access what aws does is it lets you access 750 hours of this service on any of your oss whether it's your linux whether it's your windows you can have access to this thing and when it comes to using this service 750 hours is sufficient if you're trying to get started with aws then you have other services like elastic load balancer you have elastic block storage you have amazon web services and based on the usage they have different capacities which are made available to you for free now aws won't charge you for any of these things and when you need a demo i feel these resources are more than enough again once i switch into the website i would be talking about the free tier as well so let's do one thing let's actually go ahead and first take a look at these resources or these services one by one that is let's try to understand what free tier is and what these calculators are with the help of the aws website so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go ahead and switch into the aws website so yeah what i've done is i've actually gone ahead and i've opened aws free tier now this is what it looks like and basically these are all the resources which it has to offer but before we do that what you need to understand is you need to create an account here to do that you'll have to go ahead and enter your debit card or credit card details now aws won't charge you as long as you use all these services in the limits which aws has mentioned and to be honest those are fairly large limits so you won't be exceeding that if you are just using or having a demo of these services 
So how does one do that? One goes ahead and gives in their credit card or their debit card details. AWS will charge you one dollar, that is one USD, for some verification purpose. And within 10 minutes, that amount would be refunded back into your account again. So this is only for the verification purpose. And after that, if you overuse the resources, then AWS would charge you. So what you have to do is you have to just go ahead and create an account here. Now these are the free tier services which AWS has to provide. It has something called as elastic cloud compute that is EC2 and as I've mentioned it has 750 hours of it. You have Amazon QuickSight which is used for analytics basically and it is available in 1 GB of your spice capacity. Now I won't get into the details of what spice capacity and all those things are. You have something called as Amazon RDS which is for storage and again it provides you with a capacity of 750 hours per month which is again very high. You have Amazon S3, you have Amazon Lambda. Now these are fairly popular services and as far as the space or the capacity which is mentioned here, it is more than enough or sufficient. AWS also provides you with various tutorials that will help you get started here. So if this is your concern, I would suggest that you just go ahead and log into AWS's website, have an account there and you're good to go. As far as once you sign in, how it looks, I'll show you that as well. You can just go ahead and log in. Now I have an account already on AWS. For some reason, my internet is very slow today. There you go, it takes eternity. Yes, so once you log in, this is how it looks like. You can go ahead and you can actually create your own instances and all those things. Say for example, you have something called as EC2. You can go ahead and you can specify all the details as in, this will show you how many instances are running and all those things. For now, there's nothing that is running here. So there's zero instances that are running. So you can actually go ahead and create your instances and do all those things. You can launch your instances, say for example, and you get to select as in what OS and what all do you need to do for it. So yes, but then this is not the discussion for today. So I'll just go ahead and skip this part and I will switch to something called as the calculator. As far as the free tier is concerned, these are all the services that are available to you and you can actually go ahead and use those. Now next we have something called as our simple monthly calculator or AWS calculator. Now it gives you your monthly estimate as in for all the services which you've used. All you have to do is you have to go ahead and add the details as in what is the description? How many instances are you using? Its usage and the type of the instance. Now the T1 and all those, the micro instances and all those, these are the details that have been covered in a session called as AWS tutorial by Eddie Reka. If you want to have details about those, you can actually go ahead and view that video as well. Now this is where you talk about the billing option, whether it's on demand and all those things. You're free to go ahead and choose a plan for you. As you can see, it's visible here. And once you do that, once you've filled in all these details, your storage, your compute capacities, your elastic IPs and all those things, you finally need to come here and you just need to say that there's an option here which actually lets you submit all these values. And once you do that, you'll have the final result as in, okay, this is your usage still time and this is the predicted usage and all those things. Then you have something called as your TCO. Now this is more global or more general kind of an application. Now this is something that deals with your interim expenses and all those things. This is for the overall expenses as in the total cost of ownership. You can select the currency here as in you have an option of paying in different currencies. Since it's a global leader, you have options to pay in different currencies as well. Say for example, you're somewhere in India, you would be paying in rupees and you can select that option here as well. Apart from that, what is the environment which you need to compare it against? Because yes, as I mentioned that you can compare different architectures, so you can go ahead and select that as well. You have various other features. Say for example, you can go ahead and put in the details for the servers, whether those are physical servers, virtual servers and all that. Your storage. Now there are storage types here. Say for example, you have SAN, you have NAS, you have object. You just need to fill in these things and then you need to calculate your TCO as well and you'll have the total cost of ownership too. So these are different calculators and this is how the free tier as far as AWS is concerned works. So you're actually free to go ahead and explore these things because it is available to you freely and you can just have access to this and get the know-how as in how AWS works. I hope this is clear to all of you. So let's move further and continue with our discussion as far as the pricing video is concerned. Now that we've understood what the AWS free tier is, let us move further and consider this final point of discussion that is cost optimization. Now this is a very important point. As I've already mentioned that money is very important when you talk about businesses. It is also very important that you are able to optimize all the money that you are investing in various projects. 
now this is where aws is very good because it helps you optimize your cost a lot yes it has great pricing models but apart from that it also lets you use those wisely so you can optimize your cost let us take a look at these points one by one right size your services now as i've mentioned it is easier to upscale but it is not easy to downscale so it is always wise to start with lesser resources and lesser compute capacity so this is where right sizing becomes very important and aws lets you do that since i've mentioned that it has highly flexible pricing model you can actually go ahead and choose minimum resources start with small and then upscale according to your needs we also have something called as reservation benefits which i've again discussed in the past you can go ahead and choose the models which actually meet your requirements and you can actually go ahead and reserve few of the resources upfront which you are very sure about and yes you end up paying less again elasticity benefits now what aws does is it provides you with various tools it also provides you with something called as scheduler now these time schedulers what they do is they let you switch off and switch on your various resources that might fluctuate when you talk about their usages say for example you have services like ec2 rds now these are instance based services and when you talk about their usage that might not be constant throughout the various hours of the day so you can decide to switch off and switch on these resources so that they are used optimally and you end up paying only for the hours for which you've used those services so this is where time schedulers do come into picture and this is where aws has great elasticity or great flexibility finally in this list we have something called as track and manage services now aws provides you with various tools and softwares that actually go ahead and let you keep track of all the real time usage and measurements that you're concerned with now what this does is this actually helps you optimize your usage how because there are tools that let you build real time dashboards and all those things now since you have those you can analyze all the traffic all the data and all the resources which you are using and thus you can cut down on a lot of cost or you can just go ahead and optimize a lot of money and cost that you are investing in your projects so these are the points that are very important when you consider cost optimization and this was probably the last point when you talk about our today's session that is aws pricing so if you're concerned about going ahead and picking a proper cloud service provider i would say that choose aws and it would definitely ensure that you sleep with a lot of cost optimized i hope you had something new to learn from this session as far as this session goes this is the end of it thank you bye bye i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning